Hi everyone, Baltimore's Inner Harbor is filled with so many interesting things. In fact, this uh, Hagel rerun is when we were in my home state of Maryland in the city of Baltimore. We show the Inner Harbor, lots of uh, cool sailing ships and uh, good seafood and uh, some really cool sights. So we hope you enjoy. This is January, 2022. That's right. Here it comes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Fred. <laughs> Our um, gimbal was acting weird. We just had to restart it four times. Yep. So fingers crossed that... Uh, Fourth time's a charm. Hi, yeah. everyone. Hello, hello, hello. You know what they say. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Baltimore. Uh, we're happy you're all with oh, us. Oh, Patrick and Banff says, hey. Well, that's nice. Oh, I'm going to put my gloves on. I know. It's, it's actually not that cold, but it's breezy, so... You I know how that changes everything. Somebody said Ian and Papoose are here. What? Oh, that's exciting. Yay. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Ian and Papoose, how are you doing? We haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Steve. Colleen, Lynn, hello. Good morning. Howdy, howdy. Yay. We're happy you're all with us. <clears throat> We're, um, we have just over seven minutes, and then our tour will start. We, um, for those of you who might be new to us, first of all, hello, I'm Patrick. And I'm Aaron. And we're glad you're with us. Um, we are just saying hi to some friends. Um, yes. Aw, yay. Peppers. Happy to see you, hello. too. Hi, Jen and Weeb K and <clears throat> Jane and Sarah. But we're going to get going in about seven minutes. Yay, and, hi, um, Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for those of you that may not know, um, Papoose is our wonderful guide in Barcelona. Yes. And Ian is in Birmingham and... I think I did. I just see you're you're doing a new version of your Warwick tour. I feel like I just saw a post about that. Um, so that's nice. And Dave K is here from Dublin. <sighs> Dave K, yeah, yeah, you're really you could give tours here in Baltimore if you find yourself in the area again. You should come I know. do tours here. It's true. They'd be lucky. Oh, is it chilly, Karen, in St. Louis? Yeah. <clears throat> Kathleen says seeing the prom on Sunday. Oh, Yay. that's exciting. Yeah, so for those of you um, that don't know, Patrick is doing the show The Prom, which is uh, a national tour of the musical The Prom uh, going all around the United States. And right now it's in Baltimore. I'm doing uh, Mrs. Doubtfire the Musical on Broadway, but we're in a nine-week COVID hiatus. <laughs> so um, I'm jumping uh, out with Patrick every now and then, and we'll do some tours wherever yeah. we are. Aaron's uh, Mrs. Del the Del the loss of Mrs. Doubtfire for a few weeks is my gain because Aaron gets to come out and visit me on, yeah. on the road, which I like. Norman, we have that PBS special taped, the reopening special, so I can't wait to watch it. Um, and somebody asked if we've seen the West Side Story movie. Yeah. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So good. If you if you are a big fan of the original West Side Story movie, um, the new one sort of pays homage to yeah. the original it's in that original style but just oh it's so it's good special. they it really is yeah. they did a great job and we would be the first ones to be like you didn't get it right mr spielberg <laughs> <laughs> but no it really is it's it's really well done um yeah the uh, agreed lori the choreography is spectacular again like patrick said it, it pays homage to jerome robbins stuff but feels new and correct and um yeah it's so good they also switched some i don't know if, if anyone's a big fan of the original movie they sort of switched some plot points around yeah. it's the same story but um they just sort of rearranged some of the music and in my opinion improved it and yeah it, makes it you know made it better yeah 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 oh terry and julian said when you're in chicago they'll try to see it yeah yeah, yeah. it'll be there yeah. i forget which theater oriental uh, i think it's the I think it's the Oriental yeah. Theater. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Hello. Jenny, Jenny agrees with you. Hello, Pamela. Oh, Cadillac. The, oh, it's the Cadillac. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Is that the Cadillac? Is it called the Cadillac Palace? No. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say warm. Sunny, though. Definitely sunny, which is we're going to get some good picture yeah. moments, which is nice. Not that it's terribly cold. It's better than D.C. the other day. I think it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, we'll take that. Um, yeah, couldn't agree more. Natalie Wood was so good in that original movie. Um, but this, this new, what's her, I can't remember the actress's name. Rachel Zegler. She's, she's pretty fantastic. And she does her own singing. Well, I mean, you know. 
I mean, Natalie Wood didn't, right? It was Marnie she Nixon. Didn't. It was Marnie Nixon. But back yeah. then, I mean, that it happened. Was, it was more acceptable That happened then. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Patrick says, Ken says, hi. He's going to breakfast. Good. We just had breakfast. We had a late breakfast we ate at Miss Shirley's Cafe here in um, Baltimore. It was really good. It was a place called Miss Shirley's. Yeah. And, um, and surely you must go there if you come to Baltimore. She didn't disappoint, Shirley. That's all I know. Um, <laughs> Tish, we're in ba- ba- Baltimore, Hans. Yep. Baltimore, hon. Yeah. yeah. We go down down the ocean on a float boat and get some crab cakes, hon. <laughs> if you're if you're from the Baltimore area or have spent any time here, you know that's that's a familiar accent. Yeah. Go down the ocean on a float boat. For those of you that don't uh, know that, that is the Baltimore accent. We're, we're gonna, we'll make Patrick do that again once the tour start, <laughs> starts. We I, didn't even discuss that, but we <laughs> people should hear the Baltimore accent. Yeah, yeah, hon. And Patrick's from Maryland, so it feels like you can do it, and it doesn't quite feel like you're fully <laughs> poking fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, we're in my home state. Um, I grew up in very south Maryland, um, St. Mary's County, which is the southernmost county in the state of maryland um and the original they call it the mother county that's where i grew up but we're very uh baltimore is northern maryland so susan asked what is the name of the famous fish restaurant well a lot of people think of phillips which is kind of the um chain in the area um i think timbuktu is the best crab cakes in the baltimore area uh then there's another one um fadley 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 i never know how to say it yeah, Fadley's. Cynthia says Papa's. And look, Cynthia says she's in Baltimore. So she says Papa's. There yeah. we go. Yeah, we'll take it from a local. Thank yeah. you, Cynthia. Papa's. Yeah. We'll try it. I'll have to try. I haven't tried Papa's crab cakes. Um, Janet is asking, how long um, are we in Baltimore? I'll let you take it. Uh, we, I'm here uh, just for the, the rest of this week, here until Sunday. I leave. Uh, we head to St. Louis on Monday. Uh, next Monday, we'll be heading there. Everybody says Papa's for sure. Oh, my goodness. All right. I've always gone to Timbuktu. All right. All right. You sold us. So Papa's is better than Timbuktu? Why are you whispering? Is it, it's not a secret. Because maybe maybe somebody's nearby. It's just between us. Um, we have just over a minute, and then we're going to get going. Oh, it's Oprah's favorite. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, if it's one of Oprah's favorite Come things. On. I mean, all right. Yeah. Um, I'm only here, by the way, until today. I'm leaving... Uh, um, to go back to New York today. And um, Glad's asking, did you take the train? Well, Patrick had our car in Washington, D.C. Then we drove from Washington, D.C. on Monday after the big snowstorm. <laughs> um, and then I'll drive our car back to New York today. Norman, it's not, um, the tour is not at this point scheduled to go to Detroit. I think that Detroit was planned early on. And for some reason, I don't know why. Um, that was taken off of the schedule. So, bummer. And I love Detroit. Yeah. I love that great museum there, too. I, the Ford. Yeah. I haven't played Detroit in a long time. I played the Masonic. And mm-hmm. what I remember about the Masonic in Detroit is that while you're on stage performing, I don't know if they still do this, but they roasted almonds in the lobby. So there were freshly roasted almonds for the audience like to buy at intermission. But that's all you smelled. So you're on stage like singing and dancing and just drooling because you just <laughs> smelled these delicious um, roasted almonds. It's go time. Here we go. Yay. Welcome, everybody, to Baltimore, Maryland. We're going to be showing off the Inner Harbor today. If you're new to us, I'm Aaron. And I'm Patrick. We're happy you joined us. Yeah. And we are normally the New York City guides. Um, but if uh, you don't know, uh, Patrick is doing the national tour of a show called The Prom, and uh, it's here in Baltimore right now. It's all over the country, and I'm doing Mrs. Doubtfire, the musical on Broadway, and we're on a nine-week COVID hiatus right now, so we start back up March 15th. So we thought, what a perfect opportunity while I'm down to just jump on board with him. There we go, Susie, March 15th. And uh, so I'll be bopping along with him a little bit here and there, and we'll um, throw in some of our road trip tours like we've been doing the past year. For those of you that have followed us before, we like to take road trips and show off wherever we are. So um, we'll get some of those, more of those in. It's 44 degrees Fahrenheit here in Baltimore, 7 degrees Celsius. It's kind of breezy, so even though it's not totally frigid, the cold is making it a little bit colder, but it's sunny, so we'll have good pictures. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, I said the sun is making it colder. I meant the wind. <laughs> Fair we enough. got there. We, got, we all got there in the end. And it is noon. It's 12 o'clock p.m. here, noon. Yeah. That's right. Oh, it's me. Sorry. Um, you can take uh, postcard pictures. All of you, most of you know this, but I'm going to say this just in case. 
there might be um, you know one or two people that that don't know this um, when you see something you like you can click that little icon in the bottom center of the screen and um, it will save a postcard picture in your Hago profile you can send those to your family or friends or um, just enjoy yourself um, oh, whatever I think, you like. I think Sandy is new welcome Sandy we're happy Sandy. we're happy you're with us um, I hope you enjoy it and um, yeah, we'll try not to mess things up too much. <laughs> Somebody also asked if I'm going to St. Louis. Um, yeah, so Patrick's headed to St. Louis for a couple of weeks with his show, The Prom. I'll be there for um, a little bit as well. So we'll, we'll have some tours pop up in and around that area. We haven't even discussed that yet, but we'll definitely have some while we're there. Um, if you're having any technical issues, of course, there's some technical help on the sidebar menu there. And I think that's all I have. All right. We're, um, I'm going to leave my mask down for a little bit because we're not near literally anybody. Yeah, but then no as we around. move along, we'll, we we'll might get, slip them back yeah, on. Yeah, we'll get uh, closer to, uh, to some folks. So we're starting here, uh, right here, Baltimore's Inner Harbor. We're starting by the Mr. Trash Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Mr. Trash Wheel. Uh, so this kind of combines old and new technology to harness the power of the water that it's in and the sunlight. There's a, um, solar panels on the back side of it right now. And what it does is it collects litter and debris that comes flowing down the Jones Fall River. This is the Jones Fall River, the water that you're seeing uh, right here. And what it does is it has a rake, which you actually, we might be, you can actually see the rake right now. Yeah. Like uh, at the, where it all funnels in, that rake, if you can zoom in, <laughs> see it, you can see it right there in the middle. That helps lift the trash up out of the water onto that conveyor belt, belt that goes into his mouth and onto a separate trash barge that's not there right now. Agreed, Paul. The ocean needs it. It's a great system. Yeah. Um, just yesterday when we were here testing um, this tour, uh, this whole area cordoned off, you can see these uh, cordons here, um, was filled with trash So I don't and debris. So I don't know how often they, the barge comes to empty this out, but um, it is completely empty now. Um, and so, yeah, I, yeah it's kind of a neat come thing that they do. Yeah, it collects about 38,000 pounds in a single day, or about 17,000 kilograms. And um, since its inception, it has collected 832,212 plastic bags, 12.5 million cigarette butts, gross, don't smoke, <laughs> 1.3 million foam containers, 1.5 million plastic bottles, 5,881 sports balls. Actually, it's got to be 5,882 because when we were here uh, yesterday, there was a soccer ball on top of all the trash, a keg, a guitar, and get ready for it, a ball python. No, thank you. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. and it is uh, all incinerated to collect electricity or to uh, generate electricity. It's not sorted for recycling yet. They said they're still trying to figure that out. It's um, difficult uh, the sorting aspect, so they incinerate it. That's the Baltimore skyline you're seeing there in the distance, uh, or just by this by this bridge over on the other side of this bridge. And we're going to cross over this little bridge, and as we do, you'll see um, a pavilion. We'll also get another view of the Mr. Trash Wheel as well. Um, but the pavilion that you'll see is actually a concert venue that seats a little over 4,000 folks. Um, oh, there's the... Sorry. Marsha, yeah. uh, we, don't, we don't know. We're assuming because we were here yesterday testing um, for today's tour, and uh, the trash was all there yesterday. Uh, and then it's gone today, so maybe they do it, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday yeah, mornings. Yeah, and it was um, a lot too. Yeah. I mean, it was. It, so maybe they also wait till it fills up. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's the skyline. So the sun's not going to be totally in our favor, but let's just flip back and see. You'll see the concert venue that we were talking about right there. That's called the Pier Six Pavilion, and uh, it's a summertime venue. And then you see the Mr. Trash Wheel right there in the water as we walk over. Again. Uh, we're standing on top of, the, not on top, over the Jones <laughs> Falls River right now. We are Jesus. We are walking on the water. <laughs> the summertime concert venue, by the way, just does concerts throughout the summer. Um, this summer, we got Chicago and Bonnie Raitt. Love me some Bonnie Raitt. And Bare Naked Ladies, who I also love. If I had a million dollars. I know. What would I do right now? You'd, you'd, I'd probably still be doing this tour. You'd stick with me, Right? Right. We'll see. <laughs> um, so, uh, as we make our way around the piers, where are we right now? We are in the inner harbor of Baltimore, uh, as you probably know since you clicked on the link to watch us. This is the most populous city in Maryland at about 585,708 people. I just want to get this before yeah. we're too far away. Oh, yeah, yeah. This used to be um, the sewage plant of Baltimore, one of them. Now, well, for a while it was the Public Works Museum. 
and now they're trying to change it to a public works experience um, where uh, they can, um, uh, kids can come and learn about the different public works. Where are the two malls? What is it talking about the two? Oh, that we're going to go by over yeah. here? Yeah, we'll yeah, go yeah. by them um, as we're walking around the harbor. Yeah, yeah, we're starting kind of on the edge of the main touristy area, but we'll make our way through that area. So uh, exactly where is Baltimore? For those of you that don't know, we're about 40 miles or 64 kilometers northeast of Washington, D.C., and we're about 190 miles or 305 kilometers uh, southwest of our beloved hometown of New York City about three hours driving. Uh, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the oldest railroad in the United States, was built here in 1830, and that kind of cemented Baltimore as a transportation hub, gave producers in the Midwest and the Appalachian beyond access to the city's port. The Inner Harbor, by the way, was once uh, the second leading um, a uh, port of entry for immigrants in the United States, second behind, of course, Ellis Island in our hometown of New York City. This is also a major manufacturing center for a while. And then after the decline of manufacturing and heavy industry and the restructuring of the rail industry, we saw Baltimore sort of shift into a service-oriented economy. And now the two top employers are the Johns Hopkins Hospital and John Hopkins University. And it's also the headquarters of quite a few major organizations and government agencies like the NAACP, National Federation of the Blind, Catholic Relief Services, as well as the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid and uh, Social Security Administration. Little water taxi here on our left. Oh, Peg, I think there was a train that we heard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the train station. We're not too far from where it is. Yeah, Amtrak stops here in Baltimore. Yeah. And on our right is the Seven Foot Knoll Lighthouse. This was built in 1855. It's the oldest screw pile lighthouse in Maryland. So what does that mean? Well, basically it means that it stands on piles that are screwed into sandy or muddy sea or river bottoms. And you can see how that would work right here. You can even see that they have the rocks under there and on display to kind of demonstrate that. So originally this stood in the Chesapeake Bay on a rocky shoal known as the Seven Foot Knoll. It was transferred here in 1997 to be a museum piece and educational site. And the light is in our favor, isn't it? We get the sunlight shining, so you probably can see the nice color of red on it. This... I'm going to come back to the lighthouse, but I'm just going to oh, yeah, point yeah. out the water taxi there going by. There she blows. Well, I thought he was going to look at us. I was going to have him wave, but he didn't look. I think he's on the phone. <laughs> Um, so here's this seven-foot knoll uh, lighthouse. This stands about 17 meters, by the way, or about 56 feet. Oh, thanks, Janice. Um, where does it go? The water taxi? Oh, the water taxi. Oh, uh, it probably goes to just uh, points all around the harbor, I would think. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty big harbor. We haven't been on it yet. You should, we haven't. You should do it while you're here. So um, I mentioned that this was an educational site, part of a museum piece as well. So in addition to this lighthouse, there are four other historic ships in the Inner Harbor that you can visit. And we're going to see some of those as we stroll along. Actually, we're going to see all four, aren't we? Um, it looks like a couple people have asked. It looks like the, t the water taxi just goes to you know different points there in the harbor. You can see it's just heading over to another dock um, not far. I think it's just so that people don't have to walk all the way around yeah. uh, the harbor. The water taxi, oh. taxi takes you all the way to San Francisco. <laughs> I would. <laughs> um, so, again, it's part of this. The, the lighthouse is part of the historic ships complex. We'll see four of them. I think right now only three of them are open to visit of the ships. But if you're coming to Baltimore, you can go on the historic ships website and see which ships are open if there's certain ones you want to see. I think normally during the major tourist season in the summertime, all the four ships in the lighthouse will be open to visit. And it's about $16 uh, to visit all the locations. Forgot to mention how Baltimore got its name, by the way. So it's named after Cecil Calvert, who was a founding proprietor of Maryland and was the second Lord Baltimore, now an extinct title of nobility in Ireland. Although, you know what, Dave Cavanaugh, we're bringing it back. Yeah. I think Dave Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh should be the new Lord Baltimore of Ireland. I know. Well, Dave, you could be a descendant. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, he lived here. Is there a, I wonder if there's a Lady Baltimore. There's Lord Baltimore. Is there a Lady? 
Or was there Lord Baltimore, be? was he like a, you know, a, was he a bachelor, as they say? Mm, I wonder if this is the trash barge, go, barge going to pick up Mr. Trash. Well, he had no trash. But it does sort of look like it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It kind of looks like... That could be it. How cool. City of Baltimore, it says um, on the side. Someone asked about uh, the lake. This is, uh, it's actually a, a harbor, sort of a branch of the Chesapeake Bay. It's not, it's not actually a lake. Um, but yeah, that's what this, the, the water that we're walking around is the inner harbor um, branching off of the Chesapeake Bay, which goes right up the center of the state of Maryland. And these are called the finger piers that we're walking all along here. And basically a finger pier is like a short, narrower pier projecting out from a larger dock. Um, it's kind of, I, I, I think there's ultimately like five of them here, although we were on technically on Pier 6 earlier. I think Pier 5 and Pier 6 kind of branch off from one major pier. So it's kind of a gray area of how many they consider there are. Oh, Gerard is here. That's our London uh, guy who does the fantastic theater tours. We haven't seen them yet, Gerard. It is high on our yes. priority list. Uh, we, we hear Gerard's tours. Um, you, your tours, Gerard, come highly recommended. So um, if you haven't seen Gerard's tours, treat yourself and check them out. We, we certainly are going to, Gerard. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Gerard, full confession, you had one before us this morning we were going to watch. And um, we went to the classic Miss Shirley's Cafe in Baltimore. So sorry. We wanted I'm, to check out this yes. breakfast place, so we went there instead. Full but confession. we're going to join your tour soon. Um, so the next thing we want to show is uh, Pierce Park. By the way, you, we'll talk about this power plant you're seeing in the distance in just a little bit if you're curious about it. We're going to walk over that way. Um, but on our right here, you're going to see this big metal uh, sculpture. The, the white building in the background is an event space, by the way, if you're curious about that. But the, uh, we really want to talk about the park in the foreground, which is called Pierce Park. It was built as a gift to the city by the friends and family of a prominent uh, Baltimore businessman named Pierce Flanagan III. And uh, it's meant to celebrate his love of beauty, wind and water, words and harmony, the active mind and body. And um, one thing that's really kind of cool about it, as we make our way over here, you're going to see in the paved, the, uh, the paved walkway uh, words. And they're all homophones. Here we go. Here's one, hurts and hurts. And the idea behind this, oh, sorry, it's stuck on your button. Uh, the idea behind this is that you can walk around and um, here's another one, break and break and uh, kind of create poetry as you walk around the park. Your linguist's heart is beating so much faster. <laughs> I love that. Oh, there's a good one. Three in a row. Where, oh, yeah. where and where. <laughs> I'm trying to get the light. Oh, yeah. Out the yeah. So it's got good lighting. And then that's metal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right. So these are just these pavers are all throughout the whole walkway with the homophones. And then the, the metal sculpture um, behind it, you're encouraged to walk through and slide around. And um... should we make Patrick go through it? Oh, Lord. I think we should. I'm going to take the camera. OK. All I'm, right. I mean, I can't go through because I'm attached. <laughs> but um... well, I certainly hope you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And then it, it, it's supposed to kind of echo the uh, harbor sounds as you walk through. Does <laughs> it feel safe? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to meet you on the other side. Okay. Good luck. What's that? It's echoey. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, it's probably wet. Yay! There you go. <laughs> Smooth Moves by Patrick Wessel. Yay. There we go. All right. Yeah. And um, we're just going to climb back over this little bench and continue on our way. Again, this is called Pierce Park. Just a nice little public park right here. Um, but uh, primarily we wanted to show off the homophones because it's so unique. Just when you think they've thought of everything for a park. I think I'm going to mask up because we're going to start to get to a busier area. So we're going to, if we sound a little bit muffly, we're just masking up right now. <clears throat> So, the first one of the ships we're going to show you is a way to be a kid, somebody says. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ellis. I mean, here, the truth is, if we'll, find, we'll play on any playground we find. 
whether we're on a tour or not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter 37. It's one of the famed Secretary of the Treasury class Coast Guard cutters. This was built in the mid-30s. And Cutter 37 was designed for law enforcement missions, search and rescue, and maritime patrol. Do you need me to take it? Or are you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Patrick's masking up too, so we're, he's trying to do it one-handed while holding the camera. <laughs> Um, so she was de decommissioned in 1986, designated a historic landmark in 1989 after contributing more than 50 years of service, continuous service. And now it is part of the historic ships uh, exhibit here in the Inner Harbor of Baltimore. So it is one that you can visit. Again, it's about $16 to visit the four ships and we'll see all four and the lighthouse that we already showed you. And again, that tent light structure in the background is, is called uh, the Columbus Center, and it's, event, it's an event space. An event space. <laughs> Diction, Aaron. My goodness. Now, we've just crossed onto the next pier, and uh, right here we have the National Aquarium. And the National Aquarium takes up <clears throat> two uh, different piers. So the entrance is on the next one, which we'll see as we make our way over there. But it's this iconic landmark offering, like many aquariums, marine life exhibits, a dolphin show, has a shark tank, a walk-through rainforest. It was the country's first public aquarium, and it covers about six acres over the two piers. Deborah, I promise I was looking at the guitar. I'm just... Oh yeah, oh, you'll yeah. see that, Deborah. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna once we cross onto the next pier, uh, it's it's Hard Rock is what you're seeing, Hard <laughs> Rock Cafe, <laughs> um, on top of the <clears throat> the big um, power plant building, which we'll show a better view of it when we when we cross over. So again, it takes up about six acres. You can see that walkway right there over the water. That actually comes from the main entrance of the aquarium. Oh good, the bridge is open. <laughs> the bridge we wanted to go over was closed because of the weather. Um, but it, it's reopened, so this Yesterday is a bridge. Yesterday it was closed. Yesterday, yeah, yeah, and now it's open. They opened it for us. They knew we were having our <laughs> tour. Uh, about 2,000 sea animals in the National Aquarium, and it is nonprofit, but it is kind of pricey. It's about $40 to go to the aquarium. Kids are, are cheaper, um, but it is pretty big and, and worthwhile. So, <clears throat> Deborah, there's that building that you were asking about. This is known as the Pratt Street Power Plant or Pier 4 Power Plant. It was built in 1900 in the neoclassical style with brick and terracotta trim. <clears throat> so originally this served as a main source of power for the street railway system here in Baltimore. And uh, then it became a central steam plant for the, what became known as the Baltimore Gas and Electric Company. The boilers were coal fired with obviously the coal coming in via the port that we're in right now. And it was actually repurposed in the 80s as an indoor uh, theme park. Oh, Ooh, that got lucky. Patrick glasses fell. It could have gone off the bridge in the water. Yeah. Um, an indoor theme park by Six Flags. <laughs> uh, now it's a restaurant and entertainment complex. So you can see the big guitar there on top indicates Hard Rock Cafe. Philip's Seafood we talked about a little bit earlier is a seafood chain in the area. Although <clears throat> we would say we like the crab cakes at Timbuktu, but everybody's telling us um, Papa's. Papa's. We're going to have to try Papa's. Don't preach. Papa's don't preach. Uh, All right. <clears throat> Should we go this way or through that way? Uh, let's, let's go, go that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I forgot, Cynthia. There used to be that big Barnes & Noble here. And that in that complex. Oh, right. I forgot all about that. When I was here on tour, this is now 15 years ago, uh, we used to go and spend our time there because it was cozy and nice and we could read books. So this little area we're walking through, we're ultimately going to go like yeah. that. Uh, this is the Chesapeake watershed. And uh, it is, um, this area shows the diverse geography and topography of the Chesapeake watershed. So the watershed encompasses 64,000 square miles of land. Let's show over here. Yeah. Um, within six states as well as the District of Columbia. So you can walk through this. It's at the entrance of the uh, National Aquarium. We'll just show you a little bit of it because it takes up this whole plaza, which is quite nice. You can see this little water feature right here. So again, it shows the diverse, uh, basically, geography that takes up all of the um, Chesapeake watershed. Again, 64,000 square miles of land over six states 
and the District of Columbia. So water, Columbia. So water starts in the Appalachian Mountains and travels down over uh, into over 100,000 creeks and rivers and streams into the lowlands of the Atlantic coastal plains. So this whole plaza kind of takes you on a very uh, truncated story of how that all works, basically. Here's one of those water taxi stops. We were wondering where they, where the water taxi takes you. Here's one of the stops here. Boom. I know we'll see a couple more. And this is the USS Torsk. So this was commissioned for the United States Navy on December 16th, 1944. December 16th is a very good day, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. It's our wedding anniversary. <laughs> Not 1944, though. <laughs> so this is... Um, the only submarine out of a fleet of 10, uh, out of its fleet of 10 that survived, uh, or to, excuse me, that saw service during uh, World War II. <clears throat> Over 80 so sailors lived aboard the Torsk at particular times, and it was so crammed on here, they would have to turn sideways to get by in the uh, crowded hallways. And after numerous war patrols and duties as a training boat after the war, the Torsk arrived here in Baltimore to serve as part of that historic ship's museum and memorial in 1972. <clears throat> Looks like it's closed today. Again, they kind of change up which ships are open, but in the main touristy time, usually all four are open. <clears throat> We're going to be making our way all the way around this inner harbor area, by the way. So if you're curious about that hill in the background, that's Federal Hill, and we're going to be seeing uh, closer views of that when all we right. get over there. So, so we're going to backtrack a little bit. Yeah, we just wanted to come down here to give you a shot of the uh, the submarine. Joan, your birthday is December 17th. Yay. We just celebrated it, what, a month, about a month ago. Happy belated birthday, Joan. So that was the USS Torsk, the submarine right there. <clears throat> and you're going to start to see a red ship coming into view right behind it. <clears throat> Liam. Oh, nice to have you here on the tour. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We love Hope you're well. Doing Hago tours. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> I mean, if we're, honestly, I mean, if we can just take a second. Yeah. Since Liam, you know, hopped on. I mean, Liam, this changed our lives. <laughs> uh, Hago, it's such a cool thing. We all get to hang out here together, all of us from all over the world. It's such a neat thing. In Baltimore. In Baltimore. <laughs> and um, I don't know, we get to, we, we feel like we're meeting up with friends on these tours and it's such a cool thing that you've created. So you did well, this. well done, Liam, well yeah. done. And um, thank you. So now let's continue on. Deb said, who is Liam? Well, Deb, oh. Liam is one of the two creators of Hago. Oh gosh, yes, yeah. yeah. For anybody who may <laughs> not know, Liam, who just said hello to us, created this this site, this platform, this way that we all get to hang out together and and um, travel, and travel uh, virtually all around the world. So yeah. yeah, there you go. And Liam said you like ships. So hey, guess what? We got more for you, Liam. <laughs> so here is <clears throat> Lightship 116 Chesapeake, and this one is trickier for us to get a good view of the whole thing that's not um, obstructed. So we'll give a couple different shots of it. Um, the better views are really from across the harbor, which we'll see, but then it might be kind of tiny on our camera. Uh, so this was completed in 1930. Again, it was a light ship, uh, which might sound familiar to some of you who've done our New York tours before, um, because the um, we show off a light ship in our Lower Manhattan tour, uh, which is the... Um, uh, the, the Ambrose. Yeah, I always want to say the Barnaby. <laughs> I get my, my Hello Dolly names confused. <laughs> the Ambrose light ship. Uh, but it was completed in 1930, this one, the Chesapeake. And at that time, it was considered to be among the most modern ships in use within the U.S. Lighthouse Service. So its main duties were patrolling, inspecting, guiding maritime traffic at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. So it would meet the boats and, and help guide them in. And since 1982, it's been a part of the historic ship's uh, collection. Um, should we go down and get that? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. We're just going to grab this great Visit Baltimore sign. Um, oh, we were going to go behind, but that's bad lighting, isn't it? We can do both. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's just a good postcard shot for those of you that like to have some postcards. There's a nice soundscape entrance to the aquarium. If you're hearing some nice music, that's what it is. Look at that. Beautiful. So um, fun. Yeah. Let's just try the other side. And yeah, see what let's it looks see. Like. Cool. 
Is that mud? I just went off the... Oh, it's kind of muddy here. Oh, yeah. oh that's pretty good. I'm gonna go over here. Yeah. We were worried that the sun would be right in our shot, but it's not so bad. Hopefully it's showing up okay for you guys. Yeah. Just dip in great the shot. Yay. And also in the background, I bet some of you notice something that looks quite familiar, which is the sculpture uh, behind the Visit Baltimore sign by Mark De Severo, uh, a name that's popped up quite a few times on our tours, including just the sculpture garden tour we did in Washington, D.C. just uh, three days ago. And Mark De Severo also has a sculpture in the Lower Manhattan tour. Gosh, two shout outs to our Lower Manhattan tour. I swear <laughs> we're not trying to plug it, especially since it's not on the schedule right now, but it will be again soon. Uh, but <clears throat> this was constructed in 1980. It's called Under Sky, One Family. And the title was taken from a Chinese saying that also references Martin Luther King Jr.'s belief. So it's quite a bit this week since we just celebrated his birthday. It means one people living together, working together, playing together. One people living together, working together, playing together. I like it. I like it too. His uh, sculpting tool, by the way, Mark DiCivetto, is a crane. He was a former construction worker. We have some pirate ship boats right here. I'm quite sad that they're not available right now for renting. Otherwise, <laughs> we would be in one doing a Hago tour from a pirate ship. Has there been a pirate ship Hago tour yet? I don't know. Good question. We'll have to come back in the summertime. Those look really fun. It looks really I'm fun. I'm sure in the summer those are out and about all over the harbor. And we would totally do it. Ahoy! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the building that we're heading towards, by the way, is the Baltimore World Trade Center, which, by the way, is the world's largest pentagonal building. Is that how you would say it? Pentagonal. Yeah. I think so. Pentagon. In the shape of a pentagon. <laughs> Stands about 400 feet high, 123 meters. We'll catch some faraway glimpses of it as we go around the harbor as well. Um, and it houses the World Trade Center Institute as well as several state agencies and has a, an observation level on the 27th floor as well and to our right you're going to see this stone uh, work of art right here this is the kawasaki stone lantern part of the kawasaki stone lantern garden and uh, this was donated to baltimore by its sister city kawasaki sister city in japan kawasaki japan uh, they've been sister city since 1979 due to their similar similar industrial pasts and then right behind Baltimore's World Trade Center is the 9-11 Memorial of Maryland. So Natalie in London took, the, the, uh, took you all to the pirate execution dock tours. Does that count? I think that counts. Sure. I, oh, yeah, I would say that counts. So here's the 9-11 Memorial of Maryland. This includes three 22 foot long steel beams from the New York World Trade Center. They were part of the 94th and 96th floors of the uh, there's also, um, at the end of the plaza, limestone pieces from the Pentagon's west wall, uh, as well as a block that memorializes those lost on Flight 93. And these all bear the names of the 69 Marylanders who died in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. They're inscribed, as well as their birthdays. Their birthdays are inscribed on it as well, uh, just on the uh, end of this um, uh, part. down yeah. there by the dragon. It looks like they're cleaning off some dragons. Maybe they're getting ready. They're dragging them out of the water and cleaning <laughs> them off. Getting ready for uh, <laughs> um, maybe, ho ho fingers crossed, some nicer weather. Um, so we, but for those of you that tuned in a little bit earlier, right before we started, Patrick is from not Baltimore, but Southern Maryland but uh, can give us a lovely Baltimore accent. So for those that didn't hear it. Oh, hon, here we are in Baltimore, hon. Let's go down the float boat. We can get on a dragon hunt and go down the float boat. Cakes. <laughs> so there you have it. That is a good old classic. Um... Let's show these uh, dragon boats. Okay. Yeah, okay. Dragging me over there. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, they're definitely cleaning them. Yeah getting them ready those look fun they do look fun it's a paddle boat though so after five minutes you'd be like this seemed like fun but now i'm sweaty <laughs> so somebody mentioned the two malls earlier so i'm guessing you mean uh 
There's one here, and then we're going to go pass by another one as well over here. Uh, yeah, this one's around the, the, corner. The, the Pratt Street Pavilion, this one. And then uh, there's one just on the other side. And these are um, kind of touristy shops with, uh, you know, Baltimore souvenirs. And uh, there used to be a terrific, it's not here anymore. But McCormick's, for those of you that are like to cook, you probably know the McCormick's spices. Their headquarters are about, I think about 20 minutes north of, and they used to have a McCormick's spice shop in not this mall, but the one we're going to pass by here in just a couple minutes around the corner. And um, it's no longer in there, but I'm, they did move the shop to their headquarters. So they have this huge spice shop about 20 minutes north of Baltimore um, that I haven't hit yet. Patrick doesn't know this. I think I'm going to do it when I leave Baltimore today. I'm going to go to the spice shop and check it out and maybe buy some new spices for our kitchen because it's, it's massive. They have new things they're trying out and it's just like a spice, um, spice world. Theme, spice world. <laughs> <laughs> and the Spice Girls perform there on the weekends. What do you buy there? Oh, <laughs> it's sugar. <laughs> you missed my Spice Girls joke. I thought that was really I good. I missed it, sorry. The Spice Girls perform there on the weekends. <laughs> 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 he, was, he was trying to get his uh, sugar joke ready. Uh, so this area right here is kind of known as the Inner Harbor Amphitheater. You're going to see some little steps up here. The ice skating rink. So of course they have skating there right now during the winter time. But in the summertime, this plaza that we're in right now, you'll see filled with tourists and street performers and uh, sightseers and uh, just uh, kind of a general fun hubbub area. Yeah, it's bustling in the summertime. Uh, Joanne, I think mentioned that there's not many people out today. Um, yeah, it's a little colder and uh, I guess it's a weekday, so not so not so hopping today. Let's show this view out. So you can see when you, this is kind of where you would enter if you're walking from downtown Baltimore to the Inner Harbor, you'd walk right into this area. So this would be your first shot that you would see of the of the Inner Harbor. Oh, thank you. Step down. And you're going to see a big ship right here. This is our fourth one uh, and last one that's part of the historic ships to show off. This is the USS Constellation, a sloop of warship or a type of war ship. The last sail only warship designed and built by the United States Navy. So the last ship designed and built by the United States Navy that was um, sale only. It's cheap right now, you can get it for sale. <laughs> uh, it was built in 1854. It used a small amount of material that was actually salvaged from the frigate USS uh, Constellation that had been dissembled a year before. And so that's where the name was uh, carried over from, the USS Constellation. And now it is preserved as a National Historic Landmark and is part of the historic ship's uh, complex it that you can really view. Cool. I think yeah. we'll, uh, we might, on the other side of it, we'll turn back because I think we might get a little better light on it Yeah. Uh, from the other side. To our right is that other uh, mall that we talked about. This is the Light Street Pavilion. This is where that McCormick Spice Shop used to be. But uh, there's a lot of other shops still in there, you know, especially in this when it's tourist high tourist season, it's quite bustling. Uh, so like Patrick said, we'll go past the ship and then we'll turn back and yeah, because we'll have really good light from that from that direction. And then we're going to make our way over to the hill you're seeing in the distance, Federal Hill. How's our time, by the way? Oh, we 35. We're doing good. Yeah, I think we're doing good. Yeah. We're right on track. Um, a long view of the aquarium from across the harbor. You can see the white tinted structure in the distance. That's where we started. Mr. Trash Wheel was just on the other side of that white tinted structure. So if you're, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> following along where all we have been. And in the distance, you also see the Chesapeake there, the Chesapeake uh, light ship. This is a kind of a better view of it from here, even though it is in the distance. And here's a, I think a, a better lit view of the constellation. And that's the World Trade Center again on your right that we talked about earlier. All right. The large, the tallest pentagonal building. All right. Shall we move on? Yeah, I think we should. So we're going to mosey over towards Federal Hill. As we make our way there, I'm going to give you some fun Baltimore facts. On our right, by the way, is the Baltimore Visitor Center. And um, what happens there? Well, you go to the center as a visitor, <laughs> you know, like any visitor center, but it's nice that they have it right here at the Inner Harbor with pamphlets and restrooms and uh, 
information for you, of course. Here on the left are these little, uh, little, little cruise ships that kind of go out into the harbor. This is the spirit of Mount Vernon. I'm, if it's the same company, um, I worked on it when I first moved to New York many, many decades ago. I worked on the spirit of New York, where you, you know, you served cocktails and you sang a couple of songs here and there, and you got tips. And uh, I think that's what this is, the spirit of Mount Vernon. So you can go on there and get a little dinner show and uh, have a nice meal and some entertainment. And that was the start of your guiding. That's true. Your <laughs> city guiding. So uh, some interesting Baltimore facts as we mosey along. Uh, the Baltimore Museum of Art is home to the world's largest collection of work by Henry Matisse. It has over 1,000 pieces. Free admission, by the way. Also, each year, Baltimore's Pimlico Race Course hosts the Preakness Stakes, which is the second jewel in the horse racing's Triple Crown, traditionally run the third Saturday in May. I find this one really interesting. Baltimore has the distinction of being the location of the very first umbrella factory. The Beeler Umbrella Factory was founded in 1828 by German immigrant Francis Beeler. And here's something I bet most of you don't know. I don't even know if you know this, Patrick. So Beeler actually just wanted to name it Brella, but when he went to the patent office, he hesitated. No, absolutely not. That is... That's good. It's a, it's a good joke, but that's absolutely not true. Umbrella. <laughs> um, the, the umbrella part is true. The naming part is not true. <laughs> uh, the Star Spangled Banner has its roots in Baltimore. Composer uh, Francis Scott Key wrote the lyrics to the national anthem as he looked out over a flag waving at Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. Surprisingly enough, though, the tune didn't start out in the patriotic way that we know it now. The original, Key actually borrowed a mel melody from a, a rather raunchy British drinking song. So it sounded quite different. I don't know what that song sounded like, but it had to have been like something like, Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? But so proudly we hail at the twilight's us gleaming. <laughs> oh, see, can you see by the, the dawn's, dawn's early light? light. <laughs> So quite different from uh, what it is right now. You can see this sculpture right here in front of the Maryland Science Museum. This is uh, known as Easy Landing Sculpture. It was designed by Kenneth Snelson in 1978. I think it looks like pickup sticks. Do you remember pickup sticks? Oh, yeah. But it's a series of stainless two steel tubes strung together with tension cables atop those three concrete pillars. And again, that is the Maryland Science Museum. Oh, wow. Fun fact, Dave Kay, Thank you. Uh, wait, I gotta got scroll back to that. James Roos, who built the Inner Harbor, is the grandfather of actor Edward Norton. That is a fun <gasps> fact. That is Thank really you. cool. Um, another fun fact, in the 1940s, Baltimore Brewing Company, the National, National Bohemian, invented the six-pack. So they had the um, rational explanation that four beers wouldn't be enough. And eight, well, that, that was just too many. <laughs> eight, eight was just too many. So six seemed like the right amount. And six packs gained popularity as the beverage standard uh, from that point on. National Bohemian was later purchased by the Paps Blue Ribbon Company. Good old PBR. <laughs> Another item created here in Baltimore, snow cones. Originally they were called snowballs, a shaved ice treat. And they became snow cones here invented during the Industrial Revolution. Traditionally, they were served in a styrofoam cup doused in fruit syrup and topped with marshmallow cream, which I never, as a kid, I never had marshmallow cream on my snow cones. I would have liked them a lot more, I think. This is a, a new playground for the kiddos, which is, uh, looks like really fun. It's called the Rashfield Park. It's got different sections for different ages and different types of learning, nature or marine life. And it recently just opened and it also has a health and fitness area to it. Baltimore City, by the way, is an independent city. So it's not part of any county. county yeah. As such, it is the largest independent city in the United States. Also in 1744, the first post office in the United States was inaugurated in the city. And the world's first dental school was established in Baltimore in 1840. And a famous alum of that dental school, Wild West gunslinger Doc Holliday. And actually there's a nearby National Museum of Dentistry that boasts an impressive collection of tooth-related artifacts. Shall we go up there? Yeah. 
We're gonna go up here to this kind of the what looks like the Mass. hull of a ship. Yeah. yeah. The hull, yeah. Uh, but that Museum of Dentistry has um, the tooth-related artifacts, including George Washington den d d George Washington's dentures and hygiene tools used by Queen Victoria. <laughs> it's a nice shot, a little higher up, a nice shot of the harbor there. Oh, and thanks, Kathleen. We'll have to look at that. And the Baltimore skyline over there in the distance. Oh, there's a tiny little hill. I'm out of breath. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, you can see basically where all we walked. I mean, we almost have done a giant loop. Yeah, in a way. yeah. You can <clears> see <throat> that's where we started way over there. Where Great those cool. white tents are. All right, should, should we go we, up to Federal let's Hill? Let's do it. We're doing it, you guys. We're going to climb Federal Hill because I think we're OK on time. I haven't checked. We have a few minutes. Yeah, we can get up there. We can do it in that amount of time. And uh, <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about it on our way up there. But first, let's talk about some notables from Baltimore. Frederick Douglass, Isaac Myers, Thurgood Marshall, Babe Ruth is from Baltimore. Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian. Is he still the most decorated Olympian? Did it change in the recent ones? I can't remember. Oh, we have the light. That's exciting. Yeah. Cab Calloway. A lot of people say Billie Holiday, but Billie Holiday was really born in Philly, but still called Baltimore home. So you'll still see a lot of Billie Holiday references here in Baltimore. And um, Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, yeah. The Thus, Ravens. The Ravens, yeah. The Baltimore Ravens, home of the Baltimore Ravens here. And um, you can visit Poe's gravesite downtown. Also, uh, you can visit Babe Ruth's birthplace. It's hard to see our screen right now because we're going against the sun. So yeah. if anybody's saying anything wonderful or if we're missing questions or, yeah <laughs> we'll try to catch back up once we turn the corner here yeah. we'll, we'll see it a little bit better oh i just want to point out these um oh yeah these little houses here these are like classic baltimore uh little what they call row houses um these tiny little like houses they're all over the city um little, little row houses they call them baltimore row houses kind of um reminiscent of georgetown where we went yeah yeah last week and all the, the georgetown ones each one looks so different here, most of them are quite similar, just oftentimes painted differently. Uh, okay, how are we doing? Well, we're, in so we're just trying to catch up ah, on some of the... Making sure we didn't miss any I, I major know questions. The story of Babe Ruth hitting... The, oh, yeah. Uh, interesting. Now I want a Babe Ruth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the candy bar. <laughs> um, all right, so as we make our way up, I'm going to huff and puff through where we are. So this is called Federal Hill. And this was used during the Civil War to spot merchant ships from overseas and approaching enemies as well. Now this area is one of, the, one of Baltimore's coolest neighborhoods, as you saw when Patrick pointed out the row houses back there. Oh, goodness. Ian and Dave and Gerard, do you talk while you climb? <laughs> or do you just huff and puff? All right. Okay, we made it to the top. We made it. Whew. Oxygen. So there's... The Federal Hill neighborhood has little cobblestone streets packed with shops and boutiques and artists, restaurants. But the Federal Hill area is primarily known for this 10-acre park up here known as Federal Hill. With these iconic views of the harbor where we're going to wrap it up today. You'll see some cannons still up here too, monuments to the uh, history of this hill. So we are going to wrap it up. Up here, we'll give you some good sights. Yeah, we'll show we... you. We'll end with uh, nice views of the harbor. Yeah. Um, so we just want to make sure that we didn't miss any questions. Yeah. Before we say adieu. Do you need to sit down? <laughs> I might, Deborah. We might sit down. Should yeah. Bend somewhere. Oh, we should. Let's go sit. Okay. You want to go over there? Yeah, we're here. Yeah. Not because I'm out of breath, but just because it's a nice view. Not way to... at all. How dare you? <laughs> Uh, Are you just making sure off? I didn't miss any no. other questions. Um, so we don't have any other uh, tours back up. Um, oh, that's, I, my God, Karen, I did see that this morning. I even said it's Edgar Allan Poe's birthday. Oh, and yeah. we're going to be oh talking about him. <laughs> well, you know who else's birthday it is? Dolly Parton's. <laughs> Why are you laughing? This one that's is huge. a m massive uh, Dolly Parton fan, so... 
How nice that yeah. Edgar Allan Poe and Dolly share a birthday. Yeah. I'm happy for you. And our good friend Andrew Fitch. Yes. Uh, Patrick's here through Sunday, somebody asked. Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, Tish, thanks so much. So that's our channel page. You can follow our channel page. And it's good to follow the channel page because we have our New York tours and then we have our road trip tours. And it's kind of different categories on uh, Hago. So um, check that out. That's right. Agreed yeah, Tish. whenever um, Aaron's going to come uh, and visit me out in St. Louis, and um, we will uh, figure out some tours to do there. Um, which will be fun, and um, and maybe, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see yeah. maybe some other places, too. Yeah. We're not sure yet. Um, another punny walk. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we, you know, maybe the arch. We do lose our signal down by the arch, but we got close to it last time. Yeah, we were able um, to get pretty close. So we'll probably repeat our St. Louis tour. I think we have tour. new phones since then as well. I think you're right. So that's good. Yeah, 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 so that's helpful. Um, Beverly, I'm back on stage mid-March. March, yeah. Yeah, mid-March. Uh, oh, thanks, Violetta, and Patty, thanks so much, and Tony. Oh, Tony, oh, Ellis, yeah. lots of, Dave, Yay. so look, there's so many fantastic um, places you can uh, go on these tours. Visit Dave, visit Gerard, um, who else is on? Um, Papoose. Papoose in Barcelona, visit, there's so, there's, it's, it's, Ian. Ian in Birmingham. Um, there's just such great and, and, and um, wide-ranging uh places to go and varieties of, of um, all I could think of is um, of guides. So, oh. um, you know, you, they're, they're, they're all so terrific and different and unique and, um, you know. Oh, Lynn in Sydney and I guess Patrick and Banff is on too. Oh, Patrick. Yeah. I didn't realize Patrick was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam and Mark. And yes, there's, there's check out all of uh, <laughs> what Hago has to offer because um, there's something for everyone. And um, like we said before, you know, in these past couple of years it's been so crazy and you know we've i we personally have missed that sense of community and um hago i feel like has given that back to us in a in a strange way um because we are communing with all of you from all over the world and um it feels good it feels um like it's filling the void of of um not getting to spend so much time with our family or friends and while we're all trying to stay safe so and speaking of which you know we know a lot of our viewers um are trying to stay safe and um you know some of our viewers are older and we know that you are trying to take care of yourself and please know that if you are staying home and and um spending a lot of time alone please know that you are not alone because this fantastic platform is here for us all to be together and to, um, you know, that's all we have is each other, right? So, um, and chocolate chip cookies and chocolate chip cookies and Dolly Parton. Yeah. And Dolly Parton. Um, two things. Somebody asked about the cafe where we had breakfast. Miss Shirley's is where we went. And I believe there's a few locations. Um, Cynthia can probably back me up on that because I know she's a Baltimore person. Uh, but I think there's a few locations in Miss Shirley's. And then um, also, oh, I was just going to say Sandy. <laughs> I hope Sandy stuck around, but uh, you can't have any, any cookies anymore. So we'll eat them for you, Sandy. Yes, yeah. we'll, I'll we'll, do it all we'll for you. take on I that promise. burden for you. <laughs> that was going to be my other thing. I hope we didn't scare Sandy away, but she's there chatting about cookies. So we didn't scare you away too much. Um, I think that's it. Should we leave with a nice view of the harbor? Yes. We're going to leave you with a nice view of uh, not only the harbor, but um, the nice Baltimore skyline as well. Yeah. So, boy, this is a stunning day. It really Holy is. Holy moly. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Thanks, Gerard. Yes, join Gerard in London um, for his tours. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. We'll see you very soon, Gerard. We're going to hop on your tour soon. Allison, we saw you sneak on. I hope you're well. Nice to see your name <laughs> as we're saying goodbye. Oh, and Liam. Thanks, so Liam, so Allison, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right. We'll see you all very soon. Take care.